So the feature we're gonna take a look at here in this video is physics. Physics allows you to detect collisions, particularly my flavor that I've created in my feature, allows you to detect the difference between enter, stay, and exit, and also use like layer masking. So if you wanna use the traditional way of marking one particular game object, so to speak, as uh, the player, and another one on put them on a layer of enemies, you can tell which layers should detect which layers. So you don't necessarily have the overhead of everything detecting everything. It's quite a nice system. So we'll be taking a look at that today and see just a simple example of one shape falling through another one and doing a trigger detection. And on the topic of physics, we're looking at a unity dots concept here, which is something to keep in mind that physics in a general sense is deterministic rigid body dynamics as well as spatial quarry systems being able to do things like shooting a ray cast of where a bullet or a character might go and being able to use that to detect any possible future collisions. That's what a spatial quarry is here. We're just using deterministic rigid body dynamic system to detect R2 objects overlapping. And while I might mention this being a physics collision, it's actually a physics trigger. One thing passing through another object uses the triggering option. And that's useful to know if a character has gotten to a goal, has walked through a checkpoint, has walked through an open door. There's lots of different applications for that. And you can do something very similar if you wanna detect two objects touching. But again, this is two objects passing through each other. The uh, concept here that I wanted to go over is just within Unity Dots, there is two different physics systems you can choose from. So in addition to the entities package, the burst, uh, and the jobs, you choose one more option in the case of physics. Do you wanna bring in Unity's physics system or Havoc, which is a third-party provider of physics? Both of those are viable options here. I've only played with the Unity physics system, and that's the one I'm gonna be showing here. And just know that that is stateless, meaning it only knows about the current frame of time and has no concept about giving you old information uh, uh, from before. And I'll mention why that's important to us here. And that's a completely free solution. The Havoc physics system, it's described as being more uh, faster, more efficient, etc. But I think the fact that it's stateful, as from a feature standpoint, is one of the interesting things. So stateful physics couldn't tell you things like, this is the frame where you've entered a collision, this is while you're in the collision, and this is when you've exited the collision like traditional non-dots Unity offers you those distinctions. And when I was creating my own custom physics system on top, I'm using Unity physics, I'm using all of the great things that it provides, and then I add a little bit of statefulness on top of that. And what I do is when two things overlap, I just know if they have never overlapped before, this is the enter frame. If they have overlapped before, but haven't yet unoverlapped, so to speak, then they're in a stay state, so you can know while things are inside of another, and then once there's no more collision again, that is the exit frame. So just returning us to a little bit of the stateful stuff that you expect from traditional OOP game object world of Unity. Um, I think for all of us, including in commercial projects, using the Unity physics free solution is good enough especially if you pepper on top of it a little custom behavior like I have here. But there's probably some commercial projects that have a large enough amount of physics interactions or perhaps uh, including things like multiplayer, I'm not sure. You may wanna look at the Havoc physics system. I have not played with that. You could start coding your game or demo or prototype inside the assets folder here. You've got everything that you need from the dependencies of Unity as well as the RMC Dots library if you choose to build on top of that. Then what we can do as an option is go into the package manager, let me expand that fully, and choose from any of the RMC dots samples. We're gonna be looking at the library demos here, so let me import that. And now that that's imported, we can see in the project window here, we've got a samples folder that's got some library demos for lots of different features that we could explore. Now, each of these folders is a specific demo for a specific feature. Occasionally I combine two technologies into one of them, but generally I try to keep them pretty pure. And we're gonna be looking at the physics trigger demo here. I'm gonna delete all the other ones just so we have less clutter in our project window. Okay, now with just the physics trigger demo, let's take a look at what comes with that one. So here we've got some 
Scenes will open up and some scripts as well we'll take a look at. Starting with the scene itself, we'll go ahead and give it a run. So we see that the yellow player falls through each of these goal areas and there's a debug log as it hits that first goal and then it hits that second goal. So a bit of comparison, if we were using uh, Unity physics without anything on top of it, without the RMC library, it would tell us every frame we're overlapping with the first goal and every frame we're overlapping with the second goal. And it would be up to you to just notice that first part as it begins passing through and somehow in your game specific logic, capture that as the point of entering and then ignore all of the times it's staying, et cetera. But here with the little bit of coding that I've done on top of it, you get the difference between the frame you've entered, all the frames where you're staying inside that triggering and the frame that you've exited. I'm only using the enter here. That's why we get one discrete message when you hit the first goal and one discrete message when you've hit the second goal. So I find that so useful that you only want to capture the enter that I created this entire dots feature on top of it for including, and I call that the physics trigger. Now, it would be done very similarly if you wanted the physics collision. Let's say that the yellow player was to fall on top of a floor and bounce on it, and you wanted to capture the moment. It's very similar, but here we're using trigger. And if you're familiar with general Unity physics, you know that when you have two objects that have colliders, if one of them has its collider set to is trigger, then the interaction they have is a trigger, allowing one to pass through another one. If you don't set is trigger, then they would bounce off of each other and you would listen to that event in a different way. But I find this is very useful here. I do it in games for such things as when a bullet hits the enemy, right? I've done a couple games so far where I use that or when a player reaches a goal or a checkpoint or something like that. So I find it super useful. So let's see the code that's involved here. We'll play it one more time just to see the interaction. All right, works great. And now let's look at the scenes, the scripts rather that we've got here. So we've got a trigger system, which is what we're gonna take a look at. We've got a trigger system, system authoring, which sits in our scene here. Let me expand here and show you. We've got the trigger system authoring here. That is just allows you a checkbox to turn the system on and off. I do that with all my demos. Then specific to this demo, I've got the player physics trigger system. So I'm taking basically the same idea of something has hit something. And this class is able to say, well, did the player hit the goal? So it takes the general possibility of two things triggering together and it brings them in and looks at a specific example. And you would need to do that equivalent because you imagine in a game you'd have the player shooting the enemies and you'd want player bullets to detect enemies for damaging the enemies then the enemies would be shooting different bullets at the player and you'd want them to behave differently. You'd want the enemy bullets to detect just hitting the player. And depending how you solve your game, you might not want the bullets I shoot to damage me. And you might not want their bullets to damage each other, but you can of course make that distinction however you want. Then I have a player was triggered system and the player was triggered tag. So let's jump at look at the data first. So let's look at the player was triggered tag. And as a moment of review, for most all of the data that you use in dots, you use the I component data. And there's a few other flavors, but that's, that's the main one. And that one works great for us here. Optionally, I choose to name component instances, like this case, player was triggered. I tend to end that with tag if there's no data inside. And if I do put some data inside here, like uh, public int age or something like that, then I would change the name and I would call it component. So I choose one of those two different naming structures. Not everybody does that, but I like to do that difference here. The reason that we'd wanna have a tag that has absolutely no data inside of it is you can just put it on an entity to trigger that something should be happening next update. And then once it happens, you can remove that tag. So it's kind of like a Boolean. And I've got a video um, that's just about doing that kind of thing. Returning it back to its original here, we're gonna be using this. So when we detect that there's a collision between the two things we care about, we'll put this player was triggered tag on the player itself. And then we can have any one system or multiple systems be able to check that. 
So you could imagine it could, there could be a system that plays a sound when this happens. Another one that might remove the obstacle or remove the player or remove a bullet or whatever you want to do. Um, it could also trigger other systems to give you points, update the UI. There's lots of different stuff you could do. So this is a Boolean that basically says, hey, the trigger just happened. Now let's take a look at the system that uses that tag. And this is probably the only other bit of code we're going to look at here. So we'll dive into it. So this is a system that extends iSystem or implements the interface iSystem rather. And it has two main parts. On its create, which happens one time when the system is first introduced into the world, we just let dots know what are the components that must exist somewhere in the world for this system to run. And that is going to be if the player physics trigger system is enabled, which is that checkbox that I have in the scene. And then also if there's a command buffer that's available for us. So we do those two because we're going to be using them in the update. If you're coding an update and you forget to do anything in the create, the compiler will often remind you, depends on the situation, but it'll often remind you, hey, you need to go add this into the on create because you can't use it in update unless you choose require for update. So that's what's been done here. And now let's look at the update itself here. So this one here, we're gonna be doing three main things. First thing we do is we create an instance of the entity component buffer. So this allows us to queue up instructions that will operate just after this update runs. And you can do things like create entities, destroy entities, add or remove components to an entity, which is what we're doing here. And by using this ECB concept, it's going to run blazing fast. There are needs sometimes where you wanna have it remove or add or create an entity in line immediately, you can do that, but that introduces a little bit more of a potential for slowdown. So this is a great best practice here. So first we do the ECB. Then we're going to loop through and we're gonna look at this query here in the first part. And that's going to query of all the entities that are in our scene, which ones have a player tag and the player was triggered tag. And if it has that, we'll remove the player was triggered tag. So you can imagine when that object, uh, the player rather, falls through that first goal, the player was trigger tag gets added to it. And then it's going to be on there forever. So eventually we're going to want to clean that up. So because I only want to have something execute exactly once, my particular flavor here, and definitely leave a comment if you have a different way that you like to do this, is I first remove any existing tags so that in the very next section I can add the tag. And it seems a little odd to do that, removing and then adding it. But remember, we're creating a system here that could work across multiple, multiple uh, other class files where maybe they all want to know the one single moment when player was triggered was happening. And that's a good use case for us here when we want to check that uh, a trigger enter has happened once. So here we basically clean up any other tags that are there before from any other uh, physics interactions. And then down here is where we add the new tag. So when we first have the player hitting that first goal, there would be no player was triggered tag uh, yet. And here in the second portion, we're gonna do this query. And this query is going to say, of all the entities that are in our scene, which ones have a player tag, right? We got that. And which ones have, this is a custom one from the dots library, the physics trigger output component. So this component gets added after any physics triggers have happened anywhere in the world between two compatible objects. And that reminds me, in the scene, I wanna show you how you can use layer masking. I'll check that in a second. Then if that is found any, then what we'll do is we'll check, is the physics trigger type that's happened here, is it a physics trigger enter? Now I would love, this is a work in progress, I would love for that to be the end of the code, right? But I'm still working on this system. I wanted to share it with you before I figured out how to get all the kinks out, but I've got a little problem where sometimes the enter will happen twice. So my workaround is that I check to see if the time that that collision happened happens to match the current frame. And that's how I know the difference between is this an enter from this frame or an enter that occasionally happens two frames in a row. Again, please take a look, send me a PR request for this uh, repo. If you can solve that the enter happens exactly once per object, allowing it to pass through multiple objects, so each time it would get an enter, 
and then nothing, 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 and then it hits the second one, get an enter. Without the second line, I would love to remove that without having to check the frame count. Probably it's doing some logic like this, but at the system level. But anyway, I left this in there because this gives us really good dependable results and works great. And it's not too much more boilerplate to add, but again, I do wanna work this out. By the time you get into this demo, you might see this line has been cleaned up, I hope in the future. Uh, so I wanted to show in the scene how we're able to queue up these uh, different masks. So let's run the scene one more time. Here I play and you can see we've got a console log for player hit a goal when it hits the first goal, that top uh, blue box, and when it hits the second one as well. And I wanted to show here that when we click on some of the instances in the scene, these are the game objects inside the sub scene that when we hit play, they get converted to entities. So the things that we're looking at here look like game objects, but if you're not too familiar with dots, there's a process that happens once you hit play where these get turned into entities. So anything that we declare in here can get passed into the entity world. And what we do is anything we wanna have a physics trigger possibility, we add this physics trigger component authoring. And this is the player, so we say you're a member of which layer, and you can choose any of these layers. And these layers borrow from the exact same system that Unity is up here. So if you wanna manage these, you'd add layers, remove layers, however you would normally for game object layers. That's used here. And I've added that custom for the use of the system. Because again, imagine you'd wanna have multiple different types of physics interactions where you wouldn't necessarily want everything to trigger everything. Although you can do that. You could choose the everything option here. But I wanna get a specific notification here when a player, right? So I choose that for the member of, and it collides with which one? It'll collide with goal. And now there's two different goals here. The goals look like the, uh, the boxes. And the goal here is going to say member of layer mask goal and collides with layer mask of player. So if you change that around and maybe decide it should uh, collide with nothing, then you would get no collision interaction there. And let's see that that's the case. We'll go ahead and run the scene. So now as the player falls through, because the player is marked to collide with nothing, then we get no interaction. and we move it back to colliding with the goal and we run it again. And now we see the interactions happen the way that we'd expect them to. So that's it for today's video. We've taken a look at my demo on top of the RMC Dots physics triggering system. Talked a little bit about the difference between Unity's physics system, which is the one I'm using, that is stateless and free, as well as the competing option offered by Havoc, which I understand to be stateful and have some premium cost attached to it. Thanks for watching this video. I'll include a couple different cards here. You can watch some of the other videos in this series if you wanna get deeper into learning about Unity Dots and game development with me. Thanks.